Hello everybody, today I have a new pigment review, 119, one more pigment down this week. We are coming towards the end. This is a beautiful chunky pigment, uh, let me swatch this one, Hoping, I am hoping that it's going to show up a little bit. But these ones, because they are transparent, uh, they don't usually swatch very well. So anyways, I'm going to show you this eye makeup application really fast and then we will continue with the review. So today, I'm going to start with a new primer from Concrete Minerals. Oh, I ran out of the previous one. I love this. Yeah, I like to load this up. That's it. I'm not shy. It's so soothing on the eyelids. It's extremely soothing and I love it for that. Okay, I'm gonna continue with the pigment right away because I like to just mash this with the primer before, it, before the primer dries out. When I use the two products together, these chunkier pigments are a little bit more easier to use because they just apply like a cream eyeshadow. I'm just gonna get this. work it with my finger and as you can see no fallout nothing it just applies like actually it reminds me so much of super shock shadows from colourpop the two together i mean to me this is okay for daytime i can't pull this much shimmer i'm gonna apply my powder foundation around my brow bone area and on my upper crease usually this is the second step i do but when i'm using chunky glittery pigments like these. I just want to go in with the pigment first before the primer dries out. Because these pigments are transparent, there's not much color built up. It's just shine. Now I'm going to continue with my crease colors. I want to use this peachy tone from Morphe palette. This is 25A. It's really, really old. I'm just using MAC 240 brush just to press this eyeshadow to my crease. Now I'm going to pick up this Morphe brush. Uh, I wash these brushes with conditioning shampoo so they stay soft and gentle. <laughs> This is M573. This is Saddle by MAC. It's a nice mid-tone brown. And I'm just gonna deepen the crease a little bit more. When I first used this eye primer, you guys, the balmy texture, it took me so long to get used to it. Pretty much every look I did got messed up. Because it's kind of a, you know, creamy base, so whenever you apply your powder eyeshadow, the powder eyeshadow kind of sticks and you can't move it. But as soon as I start applying powder foundation as a barrier, I mean, now I can't switch to anything else. The products blend so easily. Now, unfortunately, this glitter product, I mean, I was trying to be as careful as possible, but of course it's gonna move. Uh, maybe I should have done it later on by reapplying the primer but i don't know next time next time we have another chunky pigment coming up so we can do it with that one okay now today i'm gonna use two um concrete mineral matte eyeshadows first of all i don't recommend anyone matte pigments okay that's out of the question couple years back when everything was mac MAC mattes are so hit and miss and there weren't much colorful matte eyeshadows so pigments were an option you know they are so messy to use but they were an option but now there are so many good pressed colorful mattes if you are on a budget Juvia's Place, Colourpop of course those are the brands you can go or if you can afford a little bit higher end Viseart is amazing. Natasha Denona colorful mattes. I mean, even though she doesn't do too much like bright, bright colors, I mean, she has good range, but Viseart 
is never gonna disappoint. I can I can recommend Vizier to anyone. But back in the day, when I, when I saw this for the first time, like Matte Pigment collection of what sixteen shades. I mean, I was just super excited and I got all of them, but they are difficult to use. If you are just going to use one matte or two mattes, you'll be fine, but because these are pure powders, I mean, they are not going to build on top of each other, blending is a little bit different, so um, there are a lot of handicaps. That's why I won't recommend them, but if you have them already and if you are trying to figure out how to incorporate this into your routine, I just want to show you two blues. One of them is very dark and one of them is really bright. Because these products are pure powders, they need a base they can stick to. I know we put this balmy base, but it already dried out. Uh, so I'm going to use this cream uh, eyeliner from Pixi. Pixie eyeliners are, you know, usually messy, but if you want to use them as a base, they are great because they are so emollient, they move very easily. So as an eyeliner, I don't like them because they never set, but as a base, they are great. So uh, this is the matte nude. The reason why I want to use this one is because I'm going to use a bright blue. So if I use a black, it may show little differently so I'm using a nudie so I'm just applying this to my outer corner I mean, you don't need to be super precise because initially we are going to do some blending of course now the other thing is I keep them upside down and I open them like upside down I use whatever is on the cap and then I screw them back on and usually I sit them upside down <laughs> you can also store them sideways but I find it more comfortable to use them upside down because the product collects on the cap and it just makes my life a little bit easier this way I can push the product really good to my brush now this is a smudger brush I'm gonna use it for my first shade uh, I always have fallouts so I'm not really you know just super paranoid about it just yet because I am ready to do some cleanup but if you like to do your face makeup first this is one of the reasons I would never recommend you lose pigments at the first place because they can get really messy. So anyways, this is the dark blue. Now it looks a little bit more brighter but I think initially it's gonna cool down and get dark on us. Okay, let's work on the other eye. Oh, by the way, this is called Bruce. The next one I'm going to use is called Bulletproof. This is the bright blue. I insist on using this. There is absolutely no purpose in this. Like, why do I insist on using this today with this particular pigment? There is no rationality. I just felt like it, okay? So, <laughs> this is the bright blue. I mean, I try to keep it together. I'm going to pick up my daughter in a little bit. So I, I try to just keep it as normal as possible. But, you know, if it's in my head, it's I got to do it. Okay. Now, this one, you know, you can go really crazy with it. But because I am a mom of two and I'm just going to pick up my daughter, I just want to hide it somewhere here, okay? I'm not going to go too bananas with it. I just want to apply it just a tint of it. Now I'm going to get the very blending brush I used to blend the peach and saddle shade together and I'm going to blend around the blue a little bit. This is going to get a really really shiny look. first time you blend it's gonna look really sorry but when you reapply the color you'll be amazed 
I mean, obviously for this type of makeup you need time and this is very unrealistic for daytime. I mean, I am only doing this because I have time, but usually this is not a look I can do. And um, the more I add, the more dramatic it gets, of course, so... Um, honestly, if I'm gonna use a glitter shade like this, I wouldn't apply two coats. I would just do one coat, just like a, you know, little gloss over the eyelid. And I will just use, like, one very soft matte shade to define my eye eyelid, but that will be it. Like, I wouldn't go for this much color and depth, of course. I mean. So this completes the eye makeup. I'm just gonna apply some very light brow bone shade, uh, matte brow bone color to my brow bone area. <laughs> I'm gonna do the rest of my face really quickly and I'll be back to show you the finish. So Okay everybody, this is my completed look. I just want to quickly show you the eyeliners I use. Um, yeah, because, I mean, it looks much different, right? <laughs> this first one is Aqua XL eyeliner from Makeup Forever. This is L20. It is in my upper lash line. This eyeliner is really, really thick. I just love the color and the color payoff. But if you like to do dramatic eyeliner looks like cat liners, I wouldn't recommend this formulation because it dries out really fast and it is it it dries out like a thick coat. So yeah, I don't think this is suitable for dramatic eyeliner looks. But if you just like to trace your lash line like me, it's a great formula. This one is from Sephora. It's in the outer lower lash line. It's a beautiful teal shade, sweet shoes, but I don't like the formulation. The one I have is really, really dry and giving me some hard time, so I'm just gonna use it up and find another teal eyeliner. This one is from Inglot, it's in the lower lash line. It's a beautiful lavender. This was a gift with purchase. I hated the color first, but now I love combining it with the purples and the blue looks I do. Formulation-wise, it is not the greatest eyeliner, but it stays put quite a nice time, and the color is a little bit of a difficult color. I like how it performs. Would I repurchase it? No. Now, <laughs> back to our pigment. 119. This is a beautiful, beautiful rose gold. But it is one of those chunky pigments from Inglot. And to be honest with you, these are very, very hard to use. I will skip it. Color-wise, it's so beautiful. But um, these particular ones with chunky pigments, they have very intense shimmer in them. To a point where it competes with the other beautiful aspects of the product. For example, you don't see much of the duochrome effect within this product. It's a beautiful rose gold, but all you see is super sparkly shine. Um, so in that sense, I don't feel comfortable using them during the daytime. The way I like to use these mostly is when I mesh it with the balmy textured eye primer I use, because then it turns into this creamy eyeshadow and it is more like a wash of sheen, rather than being very intense disco ball kind of a look. But if I try to use it in another way, over like, let's say, concealer or over some creamy eyeshadow, I always have ton of fallout. So you really need to have the right base to use this product. I will skip on this. If you like shiny eyeshadows but are looking for something a little bit easier to use, I really love Colourpop Super Shock Shadows. Uh, the price point is right especially if you don't use them all the time i think just six dollars to eight dollars per eyeshadow is great and you don't need all much you just need like a couple different tones and that's it uh, but anyways i love the color but because it's a loose pigment it's a chunky pigment it's messy to use that's why i'm not gonna recommend it thank you so much for watching please stay safe and i'll see you in the next video bye